Hi, and welcome to this new video about uh, generative AI in which um, I want to tell you how I'm using different provider for API in my everyday flow. And that is because that's one common question. So people ask me, hey, which is the model you're using? Which is the subscription you have now? And I must admit to you, I have very, very uh, few subscription. I usually have only one at a month and I have API for the vast majority of the service. And thanks to API, I can call multiple models and pay only for my real usage. So if you use API and you use extensively a service, probably you could spend more with API than using a subscription. That's normal because the subscription is something that is made for um, letting you in into the system, into the API. So uh, for each user that has a subscription, most users use less and some users use more, so the company is usually at an advantage. But thanks to the fact that I'm using the API, I can use model from OpenAI, I can use model from OpenAI exposed by my Azure account, I can use Entropic, I can use Gemini, I can use Coire, I can use my Olama models, and everything is really simple. But the problem is each API has its own um, language talk to a different talk with a different JSON. So how you can put order in everything? And so another question is: You use API, but you need an UI to use this API. So which is the UI, a local UI that you can use to configure everything and use your API? Now I explain you what is my actual setup. I'll be real quick. The core of everything is the LIDLLM proxy server. Uh, this is a proxy server that allows you to talk to different API and use only one model to talk to every API. And the model is the OpenAI API model. And that is because OpenAI was the first to expose an API to call ChatGPT. So every program on the planet that works with generative AI has the knowledge and can talk to OpenAI compatible um, service. So LIDLLM allows you to do this, to have a front end that expose every other large language model API it supports as, is, as it will be OpenAI. Basically, this is a scheme, okay? So your application, Okay, it, it uses only the OpenAI format to talk to Light LLM, and it will redirect your um, your API to OpenAI, Entropic, Google Gemini, Azure, Bedrock, whatever. It supports very huge amount of uh, different provider, and so the advantage are it exposes everything. It's exposed as OpenAI format. It redirects to any provider it supports and supports lots of provider, and it has same code talking to different model. For the supported model and provider, you see in the official documentation, um, you have really, really huge amount of um, of providers. So the most famous provider are all there, and there are also less known model. But you have everything: Aginface, Databricks. Uh, NVIDIA name, something I never used. And as a bonus, how difficult it is to start with light, um, with light LLM? It's very simple because it has a Docker image. As usual, Docker run and you are up and running. Uh, light LLM usually use port 4000. And you see, I've redirected the one of my config file in the app config uh, YAML. And this config is the core of everything. That is a simple configuration. As you can see, I have a model list. Um, you have a lot of options. This is a very minimal configuration file. You can usually um, have more customization, but at least you need to have a model list. You start with the model name, and the model name um, explain to Light LLM which is the, the provider to use. Um, and then uh, this is the model. So this is um, actually, uh, to be more correct, this is how you would call the model. It's called Cloud Opus 4. This is the code you find in the, docu in the documentation of Light LLM to um, explain which is the specific model you want to use. This is an entropic, usually is the 
uh, name of the provider slash name of the model, and then you need to do uh, API key. Usually for the vast majority of provider, API key is the only parameter, but as an example, you can use OpenAI from Azure, and as you can see, as you can ask me, why should I use LIDLLM to access Open AI exposed by Azure since, you know, it's the very same model. Already they have the same model. So my answer is if I expose everything into the LIDL LM, I have one unique interface where I can point my program in every API is there. All the access points are saved there. Uh, all, all the API key are saved there. All model I want to use are saved there. So um, I specified Azure slash and that's the model. And so I specify my um, endpoint account, then I have the API key. So you see th this provider, the Azure provider need API base. So the documentation explain for every provider, which are the information it need. And in the API version, that's really important. Check always the API version because the Azure OpenAI can give you error if the API version is not correct. And sometimes the error that LightLLM gives you, it's a little bit misleading because you can have a 404 like not found. So it seems that you, you don't find your uh, model. So in this situation, uh, better check the API version. And as a model name, you should use for simplicity, you should use the name of the deployment name in Azure. So I have GPT-40 mini, this is my deployment name, is the model name. That's the code of the model and then API based key version and everything. It's, that's enough. Now my LIDLM proxy is running in port 4000. I have the open, AI the open API specification. So it is giving me everything. So you can, um, you can check everything on this. And so you have a nice couple of link and it's a uh, light LLM um, admin panel on UI. And so you have environment setup instruction. And so it is database URL, light LLM master key. So this is a minimalist selection. Um, you can, and, and, and it say, hey, you can use a database for saving thing, et cetera, et cetera. And this is the link to the documentation. So everything is really uh, nice. And you can use the light LLM model cost map so you can be redirected to model light LLM and it, it try to say uh, GPT, what is the, the input cost per token. It is nice because you have a really nice uh, list of every provider and uh, how much does it cost. And it, it is really useful. But now that I have this, um, you have some not noticeable endpoint like slash models. If you use slash models, it gives you all the models registered. So you see I have 01, 03 Pro, GPT. So 03 Pro does not work due to a problem. I will come back to in uh, in, in another in another video. Um, so you have Cloud IQ and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, um, if you look at my Docker, I have Open Web UI. So Open Web UI is a, a web UI that can access um, large language model with a uh, nice local running UI. It's uh, running Docker. You have all the instruction in in the uh, Open Web UI uh, page. I use him for 3001. Uh, as you can see, if you you have a sign in, and this is because I'm using a browser where I'm not signed in. So uh, that's a local sign in. So it does not even if it's running local, it asks uh, sign in because that's the same code that runs uh, on uh, on real on the web. So if I use the browser where I'm logged in, I have uh, some interesting things. So I have all my chat uh, and everything and I can do settings. And when I uh, do the connection, the only thing I do is say, hey, localhost 4000. And I have a fake API because Lidl LM, uh, I, I installed without any API key, uh, without any master key to protect. So. Uh, I can access all the model with any uh, um, any uh, key, so it's I, I don't need to require extra protection. Uh, thanks to this, you can create a new chat, choose a model like GPT-40, and tell me specification for C# -sharp program that handle a web um, calendar, and it okay. You have everything, so this interface is 
um, really nice because, uh, as you see, you have syntax coloring, you have stuff, you have everything. You can even um, edit, and this is a very, very real powerful um, function that you can use and I always use. So uh, when I have an answer, I like the answer, but maybe it's not perfect. I can uh, I can uh, remove something, okay? So I can edit the answer of the large language model and then say, okay, now uh, the conversation can proceed like uh, if the large language model answered a different thing, I can switch the conversation between, so I can switch to O1 um, and say, uh, can you generate a bullet point to give to software engineer to write the program? Okay, and now the model is different. So as you can see, it's very nice because you see the answer is slower because O1 is slower. So I can change the the model in the between. Okay, it, it, it answered me. Uh, and another uh, thing that is interesting, I can uh, compare O1 to, I don't know, maybe Cloud Sonnet 4. Now that I've chosen two, I can say, okay, regenerate. And, um, okay, no, sorry. Um, let's do a new chat. I can use O1 and add a Sonnet 4. And now I can say, generate specs for an app that and a calendar. And I have both the answer, one on side on the other, okay? So you can use multiple model and look at the uh, different answer they have. As you can see, O1 is usually slower because it's uh, uh, the first thinking model from OpenAI. But the nice thing is that, you know, I have this nice user interface and if you have a large monitor, you can look at everything and you see it's, it's nice. Uh, now, as you can see for the O1, the streaming does not work and that could be some problem. So sometimes you have some glitch. So I had the O1 answer all by a single um, a single answer while I have my Sonnet uh, streaming be enabled, okay? And so you have everything. And now you can merge response and the merge response will use a model to merge response. So it is really nice to be able to use multiple APIs with a very simple way uh, with a local interface that allows you to interact in a very um, complete way with the large language models, such as comparing and doing other stuff. To conclude, thanks to LIDLLM and Open Web UI, I can have a nice local running interface that access multiple APIs, so I can use multiple large language models with a single unified UI, compare, answer, and do some advanced stuff without worrying about anything because all the access to every model I want to use is mediated by LIDLLM proxy that brings a unified endpoint that exposes all my API of different models in the same endpoint with the OpenAI syntax. So every program on the planet that can talk to a um, large language model supports OpenAI models. So you can point to your localhost 4000 slash model. You have all the endpoint. Um, describe it, you have this vulgar interface and you don't need even to worry about tokens because all, because all the tokens are stored inside the configuration file so you can store securely that configuration file in a safe place and everything is really, really simple. So if you still are not using a light LLM, I should give you a hint. Give it a try because it can simplify your life. Bye-bye, and I'm awaiting you for the next video.